So as photographers, I feel like we have a responsibility, and I would even go farther to say is that we have a duty to document the world around us. Um, really, I think, just think it's our job for the world. Um, and you could argue that photography can just be for yourself, which I agree, but I also think that it's such a powerful tool that it would be a shame, at least for me, to not use it in a way to highlight things in society, highlight issues, highlight people, um, anything like that in society to kind of bring it to light in the world. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. And that's why I came to my favorite trail because it's a good place to kind of reflect. And I come here with my dog, Annie, who's about to knock over the tripod and hopefully she doesn't. But yeah, so we're just gonna go on a walk. And uh, while I'm on the walk, I'm just gonna be kind of expressing some of my thoughts and, and feelings just about my own photography and where I'm going in my journey and kind of where I want this channel to um, go towards in the photography community. And also just to kind of talk about the main topic of this video, which is that I believe that there's a crucial issue in, I would say young photographers like myself who grew up in the social media generation. I think there's a big issue that's preventing us from doing the good work that we want to do. So yeah, let's get into that conversation. So I think in a very general sense, as artists, whether you're a photographer, a painter, a composer, anything like that, throughout history, artists have had, you know, multiple times where whether their photograph or their music or painting has changed the world or at least changed a part of the world. And I think the reason why in photography and just artists in general, the reason why it's so important to do good work with your work, do meaningful work and, and to have intent behind it is because art is genuinely so powerful that it can change the world. I know these are obviously lofty, generalized ideas, but truly it's something I've thought about in the past just with my photography is that, you know, not necessarily do I want to change the world, that'd be great. All, all of us want to change the world probably in some form or the other because there's horrible things happening in our world today, um, just as much as there's amazing things happening, you know? And I think for myself, what I want to do with my photography is use it for a purpose other than just quick snapshots or just quick like, hey, that's a cool vintage car on film, you know, or hey, that's a cool building or a nice symmetrical landscape or, you know, simulating Wes Anderson or simulating, you know, uh, other photographers work. I want to use it and make original work, obviously, like we all do. But more importantly than that, I want to make work that is actually impactful and meaningful, even if it's just to one person. Even if I just impact one person's life for the rest of their life with my photograph, that's all I care about. So that's why I think as photographers, we need to have intention with our work. We need to have a meaning behind it. And that kind of gets me into the issue that I have with modern day photography when it comes to social media. Obviously there's amazing photographers out there today, young and old, you know, people who just started in the social media generation and people who have been out photographing for their entire life. You know, so I'm not trying to downplay <laughs> that there's awesome photographers out there. You know, but I guess there's a stigma on social media that there's a lot of this snapshot photographs, which I don't think is necessarily wrong to do. I mean, if you look at my Instagram, a lot of them are just like snapshots of my life. You know, it could be some car that I saw that was cool that I'm kind of, you know, playing into the uh, film photographer stigma. Um, or it's like a landscape or a city I visited, you know, so, so Instagram and social media I use is like kind of a journal like a lot of us do, you know, but I think I get so frustrated with myself and my own work that I'm like, I feel like I'm not going anywhere. I feel like I'm not doing anything. And you know, for a while it actually made me stop photography completely. And I just left my cameras on the shelf, didn't touch them, you know, maybe would bring them out for like a, a birthday, you know, or something like that for one of my kids. But most of the time in that season, I would just kind of be like, you know what? I'm not doing anything important with my work. I might as well just stop. And then I came across a man by the name of Dan Milner. A lot of you may know him. A lot of you may not know him. He made a couple really solid points that completely changed my perspective of photography and really helped me narrow down kind of what my desires are for not only my work, but also for this channel and kind of this discussions I want to open up with you as the viewer and the community that I'm going to foster on my channel. Um, to have these important conversations as photographers, as creatives, on how to improve our work and how to really make a difference with our work. So let's get into that.
So in multiple of Dan Milner's um, like Q&A videos and just in general like his message that he kind of spreads with his photography and his philosophy on it, um, one of the, the topics he talked about is attached versus detached photo projects. Um, detached meaning, you know, in the documentary photojournalism world basically, like it's not attached to any narrative. The photos that are, are put out you know, are very incohesive, they don't work together, they're not forming a story, they're not, you know, they don't even look similar, you know, and they're not even really even describing anything to the viewer other than it just being a snapshot or like, hey, this is a cool building, cool architecture, cool person, whatever it may be. And um, attached photo projects, he kind of describes as the traditional photojournalistic route or documentary photography route where, you know, you're covering a story in Indonesia about a village there, you know, and the people are getting sick because of the water or, you know, something like that. I don't know if that's an actual story, so don't quote me on that. But throughout the history of photographers, obviously famous photojournalists come to mind like Eugene Smith, Elliot Irwin, and, you know, all these other greats and you think of their attached photo projects as something that is important, has story, has narrative, all the photographs that are in it, standing alone, they might not be like fantastic. I mean, a lot of them are, but standing alone, you might not really understand fully what the photograph is describing, but put together, they form this huge cohesive story that tells a very important, you know, story to the viewer, an important narrative that speaks about a problem or an issue that they need to pay attention to. Andy, come, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Her name's Annie, by the way, and as you can see, she's absolutely insane. So, do you want a stick? Here, you want a stick? But when I heard attached versus detached and how he described it, that was, for me, it just highlighted the issues that I feel like I've had with my own photography and just the photography community in general, um, the modern day photography community, I should say, on like social media and stuff, because a lot of the photos and a lot of everything is just very detached from meaning. It's very detached from any storyline or anything. This is gonna sound horrible, but anything important. I'm not saying photographs are not important. And again, I'm not saying snapshots are not important. Um, but it's something that really triggered me to think a little bit more about what I wanted to do with my photography. And then I kind of decided, I'm like, you know what? I think the documentary photography route is where I should go for my personality and what I want to do with photography. Um, and that's actually kind of what I wanted to announce on the channel. That is the general direction really that I'm going to be heading with the videos I'm going to be making, the photos I'm going to be making. Um, they're going to be focused around documentary photography, you know, documenting a specific narrative or story that I believe is important. And I think going along on this journey, I'm going to be making videos on this channel, not of complete stories, not of complete narratives or projects, but just kind of me being honest and, and learning along the way because I know nothing about documentary photography. I just know that I want to do it and I'm learning along the way. And I think sharing these videos might help some of you who want to go down that same route to kind of tag team. And while you're learning, I'm learning and we can learn together on the videos I'm making, just kind of breaking down other photographers work, learning from that and then doing my own work and my own stories and narratives and, and telling those through documentary photography and pulling them all together. So, um, yeah, and there's an, one other piece of this that's really important that I want to discuss, and it's something I wanted to open up to the community here, but I'm going to walk down the trail a little bit with Annie to kind of get more of her energy out, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap up the video um, talking about that topic. So, yeah. Annie, let's go. See, she listens sometimes. Not always. <laughs> One egg, good work. So here is the chicken that made this egg. Pretty nice egg. And I can confidently say that she came first. Alrighty, so as you can tell, it's a different day. I'm no longer outside, I'm inside because it's way too windy out today. Um, but I wanted to finish this video regardless um, and I wanted to end it with a question 
uh, to you, the viewer, to anybody that's watching, um, particularly, obviously, photographers. Uh, but going through this video, kind of talking about documentary photography versus, you know, like attached versus detached projects and the importance of photography. The question I want to pose to you and also to myself sometimes is, does your photography need to have meaning? Um, and I feel like the obvious answer could feel like, obviously, yes, it does. You know, photography is important. No matter what photo you take, it has meaning. But at the same time, it could also be no snapshots might not always need to have meaning. You know, if you think something is cool and take a snapshot of it, um, you know, it's a cool photo of a barn or something like that, but there's no meaning. It's not like a 18th century barn that your family used to use. You know, it's just a cool barn that you wanted to take a photo of. So I kind of want to answer both sides, you know, because to me the answer is yes, but it's also no. I feel like for my work that will be documentary work, it's an absolute yes, no matter what, because for documentary photography, it has to have meaning. I mean, obviously, you know, when you go out to shoot a story on, um, you know, let's say like Vermont, you know, is, has flooding right now. If you go out to shoot a story on the flooding, the meaning behind it is, you know, it could be telling the whole world about this tragic disaster and helping raise money to help put people back in homes and to, you know, uh, rebuild the city wherever it needs to be rebuilt. Um, or the meaning could also just be letting people know like, hey, natural disasters still happen, you know, and they might happen in places that are not as common as you think. But the meaning could also just be in each individual picture that adds up to a whole that, to tell an entire story about, you know, not just the actual story of like, you know, Bob went here and then he did this and Sue went here and she did this, but more of the story of like, the moral of it and the whole message that you want the viewer to get when they see the entire collected story. So that's what I mean when I say, yes, absolutely. Photography has meaning. And to me, I feel like most of the time my photography has to have meaning, but I could also answer that question as a no photography doesn't have to have meaning. You know, um, for example, if you are practicing, you know, if you're practicing film photography, if you're training yourself on how to take photos with proper exposure and you're training yourself how to take good composed photos, like with good compositions, good framing, you know, those images themselves might not have meaning, but the action you're taking and the thought behind it does. So um, overall, I'd say just in my opinion, that answer to that question is yes, no matter what, even if you're practicing photography or not, you know, if you are shooting a documentary photo project, the meaning is always in the images. But if you're not, and you're just going out to practice or you're just going out to shoot, the meaning for it is not necessarily in the photograph, but it's in the action of taking the photograph. You know, so I think that most of the time it's yes, that would be my answer to it. So, but I'm curious to see what you think. Um, and in your opinion, do you think that, you know, none of the photographs that you take, you know, like, oh, they don't have to have meaning because I'm just having fun. You know, I'm just taking photos of my family, just taking photos of, you know, trees or, or cars or animals doesn't really matter. I just have fun. And that's all that matters. You know, that's awesome. You know, and this is just a personal choice for me to kind of aim my photography in this direction, because, you know, I feel like all throughout my career as a photographer, I have just felt so lost in what to do with my photos. And I've had so many conversations with other photographers, you know, even with my wife of just being frustrated of like, I love photography. I know I can use it. I just have no idea what I'm doing, you know? And I feel like I finally came to, you know, to the, the trail that takes me to where I want to go and I'm going to pursue that. So yeah. So to end this video, um, first of all, thank you for watching. If you've made it all the way through, that is amazing. Uh, this is kind of more of a video that might not be as enticing or exciting, but to me it is, it's a conversation that I want to start in the photo community, not just with the photographers that watch my videos, but also photographers who, um, um, you know, are just in the community in general. I want this to be a discussion of, you know, what can we do with our photography to make a difference in the world and a person's life and a family's life and a group of people's life. Um, and I think that that is something that I want to focus more on on this channel. So that being said, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, feel free to answer in the comments how you feel about documentary photography, how you feel about your personal photography. If you don't want to pursue documentary photography and you're pursuing wildlife photography, family, wedding, whatever it may be. And then just kind of describe to me, like in your opinion, if you think that 
like what meaning behind photography means really to you. Um, I would love to see that. I'd love to respond and have a conversation in the comments. So please let me know. But, um, but yeah, without further ado, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos on my journey of really becoming a documentary photographer, even if it's for myself, um, and kind of learning along the way with me, please subscribe. It'll help me out a ton. Um, and if you don't want to subscribe, that's great, but go ahead and like the video. If you did actually like the video, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you can join me for the next one. I'm going to be putting out more videos. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. So hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.